Good afternoon, everyone. Pavel Kruszkiewicz, I am product manager, and I, Severin, will take you on a journey through selected common business cases. Let's start. Good morning. As you all know, nowadays cybersecurity is a key of importance due to the risk of losses in revenues and time. The frequency of attacks uh, have increased and unfortunately cybercrime is one of the fast growing businesses. Today, we'd like to show you three business cases from three different countries. Switzerland will be present with a geolocation as a part of a cyber, uh, commerce cyber threat protection solution. Italy and Poland with artificial intelligence in anti-money laundering. At first, let me introduce Comar. Comar is a truly global company employing almost 7,000 people in 91 offices worldwide. Comar has done thousands of projects uh, in 100 countries in the last 27 years. In financial services, we work with banks like BNP, ING, Santander, and insurers like Allianz, AXA, Prudential. Comar is also experienced in the telecommunication and the services sector having references in the Nordic region from Skagen, Brass, SAS, Telia, and many more. Comar has extensive experience in cybersecurity. We serve over 50 clients worldwide and completed successful, successfully more than 300 projects. Comar delivers cybersecurity in areas of software, hardware, and consulting services. But let's go straight to business cases. A geolocation is a functionality which responds to the needs of Swiss bank. Due to the law regulations, employees are prohibited to have access to data stored in Switzerland from abroad, but clients can log in uh, from different locations. It's a unique dimension which applies to banking sector in Switzerland. In this business case, the bank could see the solution which allows to specify the location of user, employee, or client. Among others, based on parameters as latitudes, accuracy in meters, speed, direction of movement, time stamp, or location source. It is possible to compare geolocation originating from GPS and IP. The functionality allowed to restrict or deny the access to banks' resources when connected from uh, outside the Switzerland or any specific location, for example, outside the European Union. The solution allows addressing several business scenarios. For example, remote working. Bank is sure that employee or client has logged from a load area or country. Limit or forbid access to resources. Lock suspicious access attempts from forbidden location, including cyber crimes. Define access limitation within bank and or company policy. Geolocation functionality is a part of larger uh, solution, cyber threat protection. All function can work independently or in the whole rule-based system to analyze and evaluate risk of end user, client, employee, or third party. This solution is based on an adaptive authentication. For every user, it is fully transparent and user doesn't need to install additional software or application. Pavel, please share it the next business cases with us. I give you the voice. Thank you, Severin, for so much enjoying example about geolocation. Indeed, I would like to tell you more about how we can use artificial intelligence, um, how we can use it as a game changer in anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing industry. But before, let's focus, let's try to answer the question one, why AML is so, um, why AML is so important and in fact, where is the problem? And of course, where what AI can offer here. When we are, money laundering is not only about the money. It is about human tragedies, such as human trafficking, theft, bribery, um, corruption, uh, drugs, uh, production, sales, and of course, addiction, and many, many more. Money laundering is always closely connected with crimes. Um, I would like to focus your attention uh, on a slide for a moment. Now you can see the two, I think, important sentences. The first one is the data given by Europol. And according to it, only 1% of criminal proceeds 
are in fact confiscated from criminals. So in other words, 99% are still in their hands. And without a doubt, it's not a satisfying level. And the next question. So with all efforts that companies, government secret services invest in anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing, and in fact, as we can see, the results are so poor, why don't use AI to improve detection, reduce costs, uh, which all, all of these departments generate? Yeah, now on the slide, you will see uh, in a moment a uh, simplified anti-money laundering or other fraud prevention process. At the beginning, um, typically, there is a data repository containing information about clients, their transactions, um, KYC information, and other activities. And uh, traditionally, all of this data are processed by rule-based system, where predefined conditions such as transactions above a certain amount, transactions connected with specific jurisdiction, um, cumulative amount of money sent to or received from one, ter one counterparty, generate alerts. And typically, quite a few alerts are applied. Next, they undergo manual analysis where human experts decide whether to escalate the case to local financial investigation unit or not to close the case internally. Maybe you're wondering why the analysis on the slide seems to be so sad. And the answer is simple, statistic, 95. And 95%, it is the average ratio um, about how many cases are closed after um, internal um, investigation. We, we call it false positives. So what AI can offer us, wh where AI can um, can change uh, how the typical process looks like. You can, so have you ever wondered how to improve the work of the analyst team if 95% of their work proved to be irrelevant? How we can recognize which alert, which case is in fact worth our money, time, is worth our investigation? We can use um, artificial intelligence to carry out a risk analysis of each particular case. And unlike to any human being, AI is able to take into the consideration, say, um, uh, any type of data from any period of time and provide exact predictions. And when the system assign a risk score, a a risk score to each particular case, um, we can use it, this um, sort of a ranking, as a starting point for a queue of others um, uh, for, um, from the human experts. Uh, but this is not the only advantage of this approach. We can also use it um, to uh, disca discard the cases below a specific uh, really low, low threshold risk score. And alternatively, of course, we can kibernate a certain number of cases. They will wait until new suspicious activity uh, uh, occur. Uh, of course, I would like to also tell you some business cases. Um, we we had a cooperation with uh, one of the uh, global globally operating top ten bank from Poland Polish branch and with BNL Bank uh, from Italy BNP Group. We undertook a challenge to improve the AML department's productivity. And as you can see on the screen, uh, uh, here on the screen you can see that each green column represents the uh, batch of cases of alerts. Uh, Red lines are cases which were um, which were marked finally by human expert as a money laundering or as a suspicious activity report. Depends on the bank and the jurisdiction. And as you can see, most of these red lines are on the are on the top of the chart where risk is the highest. What is of course in line with expected results. And this kind of approach allows those institutions to reduce overall number of alerts and process, uh, process it much, much fast, faster. But um, this is not the only uh, results of our work. Uh, we um, identify interesting pattern that in top 20% of alerts with the highest risk score, there is around 80% of all cases finally classified as a money laundering or suspicious activity report. And um, 
this kind of approach uh, is much, much better than in comparison to any other uh, prioritization method, method. And it means that financial institutions uh, can essentially speed up uh, a closure of accounts used by criminals and, and protect themselves uh, against being abused by them. According to the BNL Bank, they stated that they expect the process time, thanks to artificial intelligence, uh, can be shortened up to 25%, which I believe is a quite impressive result. Yeah, but so what is crucial to know before the implementation of artificial intelligence solution in your, uh, in your company? One of the biggest challenges is uh, to explain why AI marks something as a sus suspicious or not. And unfortunately, not entirely transparent work of AI can raise doubts and difficulties for higher managers, uh, higher management, uh, auditors, regulators. And I believe that it is always better to know more than less. But uh, fortunately, um, last years uh, have been brought to us new techniques which uh, threw some lights on the um, AI decisions. We call it explainable artificial intelligence. And there are many ways how, to, um, how we can present, how we can understand what AI has in mind. For example, they can be depicted as a decision trees with a probability of each decision um, showing uh, importance of each factor we can also calculate how each of decision factor influence in the final risk score. And uh, now you can see the example of visualization where XI calculate, uh, calculated how different factors were responsible um, for the final score. And as you can see, cash transactions and transactions connected with high risk jurisdictions were responsible for the vital part of uh, the total risk score. But on the other hand, uh, information about the client, his, his or her KYC, and the way how uh, uses ATM machine uh, reduce the overall risk. So still, it is quite high, but now we can easily can understand what are the most uh, risky factors in that case. Uh, centrally, centrally, you need to know how um, the process looks like. And the system uses machine learning, which in fact is a subset of artificial intelligence. And we use uh, supervised learning techniques. And those techniques process data belongs to the institution. Uh, next, the, uh, the team of machine learning engineers um, be, uh, process data, um, train AI model, and in fact build AI models. And Next, uh, uh, th and thanks to that, that AI is able to learn, detect, and understand similarities, discrepancies, and in fact, to identify um, the uh, suspicious transactions or clients. And next, all of this is uh, validated uh, unless, uh, until the successful results will, uh, will be obtained. Then we can, we can go to the production environment. Uh, now you can see on the slide the, um, the crucial thing about AI, about machine learning models, data. Data is a fuel for machine learning. Uh, uh, typically, more data you have, it means that the better um, system, uh, system accuracy you, ca you can expect. For AML example, for, you need historical, uh, historical alerts with information uh, with the final status, uh, it was escalated or not. Transactional data, so how the uh, customers, um, uh, what he uh, do or she. KYC inf information and finally data structure, which informs us about the uh, data uh, logic, about expected, um, ex ex what, what we can expect in each column, row, table. Uh, this is something really important to uh, in the in um, artificial intelligence uh, building the model uh, process. Summary. Today we focused on AML, but remember that AI can uh, also um, 
be used to detect uh, for detection other use cases such as credit fraud, insurance fraud, market manipulations, and many, many others. In that way, we can also use quite the same techniques to solve other problems. Uh, artificial intelligence can leverage the financial institution's efforts to um, uh, fight with financial crimes more effectively. Less false alarms from rule-based systems uh, translates into more time for other tasks. Deep insight into work of a system um, can give you opportunity to better protect yourself against money launderers and fraudsters. Uh, if we conduct machine learning on your data, artificial intelligence will translate your risk-based approach and your risk appetite into, new, into, into the new predictions. And um, moreover, there is no need to replace current AML systems because of um, AI can be easily integrated using, for example, APIs. And uh, concluding, I would like to underline that uh, this is the state of the art technology. And if you uh, and it, that cannot get outdated if you decide uh, to continuously learn the solution. Thank you for your time, and we hope that you enjoyed business cases and applied technology. If you have any questions, please write us an email or contact on the LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you.